Hey, what's the crack? My name is Lee Dalton and you are very welcome back to Film Resolved. And in today's episode, we are going to be covering Compositing 101. The clone effect has been done hundreds of times on YouTube. So let me start by saying that this video isn't really about the clone effect. This video is intended to teach you some of the basic concepts of compositing. The clone effect is to facilitate those concepts. So as we go through this tutorial, be mindful to think of these concepts on a bigger scale and how you could apply them to other effects because learning a concept is far more powerful than learning one single effect. If you're new here and you're enjoying the content, please do consider subscribing to the channel as well as hitting that notification bell. And please do give the video a thumbs up because it really does help it grow. But with that out of the way, let's jump into it. In its most basic definition, compositing is simply layering one image on top of another image. So let's go over some examples, starting from super basic to a bit more advanced. So right now, putting some text on top of this video clip would be considered the most basic form of compositing. Getting a little bit more advanced is pretty much what we're going to be doing today. So cropping one image partially to sit above another image. Getting a little bit more advanced again, if we go back a few weeks to our putting a campfire in your living room VFX tutorial, that fire asset and those sparks asset would be composited on top of our live action footage. And then another really common example and getting a bit more advanced again would be green screen footage. So keying out the green to leave your subject and then placing that subject on a replacement background would be a more advanced level of compositing. When it comes to camera and lighting for compositing, the key concept you should keep in mind is consistency. Now on the camera side of things, this commonly takes the shape of two forms. One, completely locked off on a tripod. And if you need camera movement in the shot, the way to do that would be super expensive motion control technology. A big example of this being utilized in modern cinema would be The Invisible Man and they have some great behind the scenes footage showing their motion control capturing techniques in action. And when it comes to the lighting aspect of shooting your footage for compositing, consistency is super important because, for example, if you're shooting and you're using window light, daylight coming through a window as your lighting source, you will shoot the first clip of your compositing footage. And by the time you move on to your second clip, there's a good chance that the light levels will have changed. And even if you try to expose your camera differently to compensate for that, it'll probably be a little bit out. And you will really obviously see the difference in exposure when you crop or mask the footage to overlay those two bits of footage together. So it's really important that you take as much control of the light as possible, if not all control of the light. The last thing I will say on the topic of camera and lighting and principal photography for that matter would be no matter what, get a clean plate. A clean plate is simply the scene with no characters or action taking place in it so that you can always do some tidy up masking later on in post. Now in today's example, I know for a fact that we do not need a clean plate, but I still shot one because it's kind of 50-50. Some visual effects will absolutely require a clean plate and some won't. And a clean plate might be the ultimate example of it's better to have it and not need it than to need it and not have it. So just get into the habit of always rolling a few seconds of a clean plate when you have your camera and lighting set up. So with some basic aspects of the principal photography of capturing the footage out of the way, let's jump into the software and start taking a look at the post-production aspects of compositing and pulling off this effect. Just a friendly heads up, I'm actually babysitting three cats and a dog at the time of recording this in my office. So please do excuse any random background noises that you may hear. So first, let's look at the raw footage in full and the performance aspect of this, because I think it's necessary for you to understand how this all works. So I'm just going to mute this so that there's no annoying audio as we scrub through. 
So you can see I press record and I sit in as clone one and I deliver the first half of the line. Then I look over as if I'm looking at clone two saying the second half of the line. And right here in my head, I'm saying that second half of the line so I can time me looking back to camera and reacting. Then I move over and sit in place of clone two. And now I'm listening for the first half of the sentence from clone one. And then I say the line. Now I actually flubbed the line here. So I simply reset, gave it enough lead in time. And then I say the second half of the line. And then I also gave it plenty of uh, time on the lead out for any kind of transitioning or pacing that I may need to do in the edit. So this is kind of one of your first kind of key tips on your general rules here is the best VFX are sold by doing stuff in camera on the day. And in this case, it was as simple as performance. Doing that extra little effort on performance, timing things really sells this effect in this case. But doing things in camera, in live action on the day to sell the effect in post and the amalgamation of the two is your best bet to a really believable effect. Now that you understand how the footage is actually captured and how the performance plays out, we can actually start chopping this up and compositing the footage. So I'm gonna come up to our first bit of performance here. And right here, we start speaking. I'll just take it off mute because we'll allow the scrubbing to happen now. Right here, we're about to start speaking. So I'm gonna use my keyboard shortcut, shift left directional button to come back by a second. I'll give it an out point and I'll hit delete on my keyboard and we'll trim away all that fat at the top. And that gives us one second of lead in time. And then that's about all the lead out time that we need. I'll select our clip and hit control B and that will split the clip. Then I'm going to come in and for now, I'm gonna come right in to the talking of the second clone, control B and we'll get rid of all that stuff in the middle. And now what I'll do is select that clip and I'll hit alt up direction button or down. It doesn't make a difference. And that will split that clip out over onto audio and video track uh, two. Now we can pull this over and then I can come to the handle here at the top of our second clip and we'll pull this out. Oh. That's enough for now because I still need a bit of wiggle room here so I can shift this clip and um, back and forth to time everything. So right now we can't see both clips, but we can hear both clips and we'll use the audio to gauge that timing. Back to film resolved. And in today's episode, we are going to be covering compositing 101. So I think this could come in a little sooner. So with that clip selected, I'm going to use my nudge keys, which is comma and full stop. So comma for nudging to the left by one frame at a time. And we'll bring it in by six frames and see how that sounds. Film resolved. And in today's eps, bit too much, split the difference, push it back right by three frames, delay it by three frames. Resolved. And in we're very welcome back to film resolved. And in today's episode, we are going to be covering compositing 101. Okay, so that's sounding good to my ear. So I'll drag that handle out the rest of the way and we will trim up this end. So. Right now, graphically, ultimately what we have is two full layers atop of one another. So the top layer is completely blocking that bottom layer. So what we want to do is crop the right side of our top layer to reveal part of that bottom layer, which is where our first clone is sitting on the right of frame. So to do this, we'll select our top layer and over in our inspector tab, if that's not open, just click on inspector. We'll come down in our video settings and we'll come down to cropping and open this up. And we'll use this cropped right option. And that will start to reveal our first clone. And we'll put this in the middle. Now, a little tip. In our case, these are so similar. It's actually pretty much no line for us to see. If we zoom in, we can see a little bit of a line there, but this is actually pretty hard to see. So a little tip, come in and change to the color page and maybe change its brightness real quick, ideally on a node that's actually switched on. I'll just add an extra node to be on the safe side here. Now we can make it really obvious where that split is. So we'll come back into that track and we'll put that as central as possible 
because even though we had perfectly controlled lighting, there is tiny, tiny nuance differences still that may be present. So given that a softening and centering that softening will go a really long way towards blending those two shots together. So I'll come back in here and we'll delete that darkening node. And now we have those really well aligned. So let's just play through this and see how the performance and the timing is behaving. What's the crack? My name is Lee Dalton. So not surprisingly, this compositing is gumming up the works a little. So I'm going to come into playback, turn on my render cache to user. And in my project settings, I have enabled automatically cache composites in user mode. So that straight away starts giving us a render cache of this. And once that is finished rendering, we'll do a real time playback and test out the timing. Okay, so now that our little preview is done there or our render cache is done, let's analyze this in real time playback and see how we've done. Hey, what's the crack? My name is Lee Dalton and you are very welcome back to Film Resolved. And in today's episode, we are going to be covering compositing 101. It is at this point that I'd recommend that you really quickly do any last bits of housekeeping that you need to do, such as finalizing your color grade or finalizing your audio, because we're about to do some compound clipping to prepare the footage for the next step, which is to add a subtle bit of camera shake to really sell that effect. So in my case, I'm already happy with my color grade. So I'm just gonna do some quick audio ducking on either side of our two respective uh, lines being delivered to cut out some additional noise that isn't needed there. Let's come over to our little toolbox here and go to open effects and under resolve FX transform, we have this camera shake option. So the thing to understand about the camera shake, which you'll see once the effect is added in the settings is that there's a bit of a random seed generator. So if I put one effect on one clip and one on the other, they will be out of tandem and they would constantly slip out of the, the footage is aligned with one another. So it looks like one clip and this would cause them to constantly slip out of alignment and it would look terrible. So what we need to do is get the two clips, right click and do a new compound clip. You could also render in place. And now we can add the effect to one clip that's unified. Now notice that this is zoomed in a bit because if not, you would end up seeing the black edges kind of reveal as it runs out of pixels. So keep in mind when you're shooting this, which I should have probably mentioned earlier, that you want to go find your framing and then come back a little bit with your zoom, or if you're using the prime lens, step back a little further and give yourself maybe 5% wiggle room if you're planning on doing this added handheld effect in post. Now, I'm not gonna show you the full um, tweaking of the settings here because they're very self-explanatory and it's one of those slider dances, which is what I call when you just have to play around with the sliders and find settings that work for this particular shot and for the vibe you're going for. And we could be here for five minutes if you just watch me play with sliders. So I'm going to time lapse through them. Okay, so that took me about five minutes of tweaking back and forth. And in the end, the settings I adjusted from the default were motion scale and speed scale came down to 0.25 each and then pan and tilt and rotation amplitude have ended up on 0 0.1, 0 0.125 and 0 0.1. Everything else I'm pretty sure is absolutely fine. Before we sign off, let's just do a quick recap of some of those key fundamental concepts of compositing. When it comes to camera and lighting, consistency is the key to capturing good footage for compositing in post. No matter what, no matter how certain you are, always get a clean plate. You'd be glad you did. When it comes to principal photography, if there's any extra layers of detail that you can add at that time to help sell that effect, do it because it's the amalgamation of production and post-production that ultimately sell effects the best. When working with composite shots that are locked off on a tripod, don't be shy to add a post-production camera shake handheld effect. So if you've made it to the end, I hope you found this tutorial helpful. Did I miss something that should have been covered in the episode? Let me know in the comments below so I can address it in a future video. My name is Lee Dalton and this is Film Resolved. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you in the next video.